Happy World Teachers Day, everyone. 
This is the National Teachers College, and we are very happy to be celebrating this important day for teachers. To all our participants in the Zoom meeting platform, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm Ed Fermin, the Vice President for Academic Affairs of National Teachers College, who will be moderating this session this afternoon. I'd like also to greet all our viewers and participants over at our uh, NTC FB live broadcast. Thank you all so much for joining us and we hope that this afternoon with very young, promising and trailblazing individuals in the field of education around the globe, we'll be able to shed light into one of the highly talked about things concerning the state of teaching and learning today. Our discussion today allows us for our selected resource persons to spontaneously talk about their views on a few questions that we have identified. We strongly encourage our audience to please make use of the Zoom chat feature for any insights or questions that you might have. Meantime, for our guests and viewers over at the Facebook page of NTC, you may also use our FB chat feature. We also have some professors of our graduate teacher education program helping us out in communicating with our audience. It doesn't mean that we are not together physically. We cannot heighten the interaction for this session. So after I have introduced each guest, it would be nice to hear from them what they consider as their most important achievement as a teacher, educator, trainer or technologist or an advocate during this pandemic and how it has inspired them to do more for the sector. Of course, by more and the sector, we mean more teachers, more learners, more parents, and everyone else concerned with teaching and learning. Our first resource person is the country manager in the Philippines and Thailand representing Class In. For those of you who are in attendance and are users of Classian, please make a shout out. He is currently working with over a hundred, take note, over a hundred basic and higher education institutions to deliver high quality, remote and flexible learning solutions in addressing the various challenges since the lockdown has started. Friends, please help me in welcoming Yukon Lee. Hello Yukon, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Ed. Thank you so much for this uh, nice introduction and warm welcome. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here today and seeing so many familiar faces also. Um, so to your question, um, what do I consider as our big biggest achievement um, over the past year or so? Um, in my opinion, I believe our biggest achievement at Class in, in the last year and a half um, is that we were able to really expand our reach. And this in turn actually helped us to expand the reach of you know, interactive synchronous learning um, modality when face-to-face -face learning is not really an option. And obviously in this process, we hit a lot of obstacles and we faced a lot of you know, doubts. And, but it is very great to see that eventually we were still able to put some confidence in our teachers, our students, and our parents to help them create some familiar learning scenarios when we are all sitting at home learning online. So I would say, you know, we're very grateful for their trust, their faith in our work, and uh, we're very glad to see the positive outcomes and, and their very kind feedbacks. So now we're very proud to say that we have over 120,000 teachers and students in the country using our services, and they are, fingers crossed, very happy. <laughs> Still very happy with us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yukon. I remember that a year ago we were talking about how LinkedIn, uh, how sorry, how Class In, sorry, uh, has been helping out many of the schools in the country, and uh, our conversations really. Uh, shape the kind of consciousness that most schools in the country have right now relative to offering uh, remote learning. So thank you for all the great work that you do. 
Now, our next guest uh, manages and develops uh, high touch, high tech, or HTHT, which is a, the same thing that we are using right now, but it's HTHT for all, which is a remarkable global initiative to deploy personalized learning at scale using artificial intelligence and high touch pedagogies, take note in low and middle income countries. Talk about the great desire for mission here. And she has chaired EdTech working groups of over 10 senior level officers of a team called Save Our Future. Armed with her degree from Harvard University and her understanding of the development of many nation states in so far as the transition to flexible learning is concerned, we will all be happy to hear from the insights of our next guest. Please welcome Rose Sagwin. Good afternoon, Rose. Good afternoon, Ed. Uh, thank you for a very kind and generous introduction. And first of all, I just want to greet everybody. Happy Teacher's Day to all the teachers who are tuned in. Uh, salamat ng ating mga guro. Uh, salamat for, for all the work that you do uh, for our country and for our students. And also, happy anniversary to, Nash, uh, to National Teachers College uh, for, for 93 years of wonderful uh, service uh, to, to our children and students everywhere. So as, as Ed mentioned, I work for the Education Commission and I manage the High Touch, High Tech for All initiative, which is all about leveraging artificial intelligence to deliver personalized learning at scale in uh, middle and low income countries such as the Philippines. So in the past year and a half, uh, we're very proud to say that we've prototyped high touch, high tech uh, in countries like Vietnam, uh, Korea, and we're now doing a work in Uruguay as well. And we're expanding high touch, high tech uh, across Southeast Asia and other parts of the world, um, hopefully in the next uh, couple of years. And so the impetus for high touch, high tech is to really be able to deliver learning outcomes. At the end of the day, that's really what this is all about, to be able to help our teachers, our, our education workforce, including school leaders, as well as students and parents. Uh, and for us at High Touch, High Tech, we look to the ways in which technology, particularly artificial intelligence, can actually support teachers. By no means do we see technology replacing teachers. It's actually very much the opposite. We see technology supporting the unique strengths that the teachers can bring uh, into the 21st century. So that's something that I'm also happy to talk more about uh, later and with all our other esteemed guests here as well. But we'll, be, we'll be happy to hear about uh, those uh, stories, uh, uh, Rose. And uh, ipinagmamalaki namin na may isang Pilipina na naririto ngayon as we actually venture into understanding all these realities. Uh, uh, to our two uh, gentlemen in the call, I was just uh, saying how much we appreciate there's a lady among the members of the panel. So you're our special Rose for this afternoon, Rose. <laughs> okay. Our next guest is a former game developer and game development lecturer at Temasek Polytechnic in Singapore. You know, he's a specialist in constructivism and game mechanics in education, two fields that have actually gone to a very effective level of confluence at this time. And largely because of this, he co-founded a practical to add artificial intelligence, analytics, and gamification to enhance the learning of primary school mathematics. I know that some of you in the audience are probably thinking, where was this guy all the time that you were having difficulty in mathematics? But... Uh, we are happy to tell you that his team is an esteemed partner of National Teachers College, particularly our basic education in enhancing uh, mathematics achievement among our students. So I'd like you to um, welcome someone who has learned and applied knowledge from research on learning, assessment, and game mechanics to create environments that are not only fun, but really optimize learning. Please welcome 
Nang Chong Ming. Good afternoon, Chong Ming. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, really, really feel honored to be here and among the panelists here as well. Uh, first things first, I want to wish everybody here a very, very good, uh, happy World Teachers Day. Uh, I always feel very excited to be among educators and wow, this, there are so many educators here, 300 of us. Okay, so yeah, so uh, <laughs> to answer Ed's question, uh, what, what have we achieved in the past one and a half years? Uh, so I would say that we, we created Practical, which turned out to be acknowledged to be a good product among uh, teacher, teachers, uh, students and parents. So we actually get, got our certification from uh, Education Alliance Finland last year. And when we submitted for the certification for our pedagogical uh, effectiveness, we were actually very worried. But when the results came back, we were so proud that we got a, a very high score of 96 over 100. Uh, wow. One of the highest scores for, for math uh, pedagogical uh, effectiveness. Uh, so I think the, the Finnish teachers really love, love our product and we are very, very proud of that. And on top of that, the, the gamification part seems to be working as well because we, we have students telling us that, we have parents telling us that like, they go on a cruise for six days and then the, the <laughs> students are pestering the parents to actually <laughs> subscribe to the internet connection so that they can actually do the daily quest on practical. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so on top of that, we also have seen students improving uh, quite a bit, a fair bit uh, from 68 marks to to a, over 90 months over a, a period of three months, just doing a few, about 500 questions on practical. So so um, I think to an educator, I think this is the, the achievement that I would like to highlight. And we are really, really looking forward to working with NTC to create fun and effective math practice for Philippine students. Thank you so much, uh, Chong Ming. And I think uh, from the last time I've spoken with our teachers in our basic education unit, I think they're having a blast uh, trying to discover the features of uh, practical. We have one more member of the panel, uh, but he's coming in shortly as he exits from another meeting. But of course, most of you who are in the call uh, know who our last uh, member of the panel is, but I'll introduce him uh, in a little while. But I'd like us now to transition to talking about one of the primary questions that we have designed for this uh, webinar. Uh, we all know that uh, largely because of the transition to remote learning setups, there seems to be this uh, brewing fear that technology integration will take away, you know, the more Recording effective in progress. dimension of teaching learning processes. You know, the, well, because the kids only see the screen and the people on the screen. So, that fear is actually looming around. So I'd like us to hear from our three distinguished uh, guests. What's their take on this uh, brewing issue? And the first to respond to this is Rose. Rose, please uh, go ahead. Thanks, Ed. I think it's really good for us, as you mentioned, to really set the tone by addressing this looming fear, right? This concern that we had over technology uh, replacing teachers. And from the work that we do at the commission, uh, working with various countries, you know, this is a universal um, concern. This is a universal sentiment that teachers everywhere in the world um, are thinking. And mm -hmm. from the evidence, as well as what works on the ground, we're really seeing that COVID-19 actually revealed the, uh, the, the, the permanence of teachers and the value that they add to, to teaching and to the classroom. No technology uh, would be able uh, to replace uh, the human dimensions um, that teachers can provide. So for high touch, high tech for all, which is a, a tech agnostic approach that we contextualize in every country that we work in. Um, if you note in the name, high touch, high tech, high touch comes first, and that is uh, quite deliberate because we want to yeah. make sure that teachers are really at the center uh, of change. And mm -hmm. so of course with high touch, high tech, there is the adaptive software that is introduced at the school level. And this adaptive software is able to predict, uh, able to uh, give knowledge and curate the knowledge uh, based on the student's particular level. So this is actually uh, anchored on the teaching at the right level 
uh, robust evidence for the last 15 years. As we know, I'm preaching to the choir here when I talk to teachers that teaching at the right level works. Um, but the only problem has always been the human constraints, right? If you're a teacher working in a class of 50, or in some cases we've seen up to 200, there's really no way that you will be able to teach at the right level. So where AI or the adaptive software can come in is actually help the teacher um, acquire the data, the learning analytics that they need to then be able to facilitate and teach effectively and focus on higher order skills. So as we know with the 21st century competencies and the future of work, uh, and we, we, there are jobs that we don't know uh, will exist in the next five to 10 years, right? Um, it's really important that students are able to acquire 21st century competencies that no textbook nor a Google search can, can ever provide. And so this is really what we see for high touch, high tech. The teacher is the one that facilitates, curates, and sometimes mentors and motivates students and being able to get the competencies that they need for the future. So I hope that that sort of um, allays our concerns about technology taking over. Um, if not, technology is always there to support and the teacher will always be at the center of transformation. And I think for now, maybe I'll hand it over to Changmin uh, for his thoughts. Uh, thank you, Rose. Uh, actually, everything that I want to say, you, you said every you said all of it. <laughs> so, so maybe I'll just touch it. Precisely, the, the, we feel that adaptive technology is the one that can actually help teachers surface the learning gaps, which is the reason why we created Practical. Uh, I think there's a lot of things we can discuss later on. So maybe I'll touch a little bit on the higher, higher points. So I agree with you totally. So actually, technology, right, is not there to replace teachers. Short of developing an AI teacher that can teach and think like a human, right? Technology is really, really there just to help us, not to fight us. Okay, so you can imagine Iron Man has Jarvis to do all the nitty gritty details, right? And then Iron Man can focus on the fighting. That's what technology is doing for us. Okay, so a simple example, uh, for example, when we do flip classroom using technology and do recordings on, on how we teach certain things and then deploying them to, so that the students can actually look at the videos at home and then come back to class where we can do the higher order thinking and discussion. It actually enables us to spend more time with our students and discuss mm -hmm. the more important things. So technology is actually there to help us increase the touch rather than to reduce the touch. Yeah, so we, we always think of things like, can, what can technology help us to do? In the times of COVID, technology can enable us to see our students' faces and expressions using class in. Without, without this technology, we can't do that. Okay, can, can, we, can technology help to give homework to students without mm -hmm. us having to determine what questions that each one of them should do or, and even personalize the homework for every single student? Can technology even help us to mark the homework so we don't have to mark it? Can the technology finish marking the homework and analyze the homework to tell us where our students are lacking in the knowledge and the learning so that we can prepare our next class better to cater to every single one of them? So, so these are the questions that uh, we, we should be asking how technology can help us rather than how they are stealing our jobs away from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so hey. that's, that's just my two cents. Uh, over to Ria Kun. Thank you, Chong Ming. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with uh, what Rose said and uh, what Chong Ming just mentioned. Um, I, I feel like, you know, ed tech at the end of the day, um, mm -hmm. it's just a form of technology and, you know, technology is a tool, right? And uh, I, I totally believe that the tool can only be as good as the person using it. So instead of us thinking, uh, why is it trying to replace us? It is never trying to replace us. Um, I think so many times we romanticize the idea of technology, of artificial intelligence, to think that they are humanized. But in reality, they are something to uh, augment our experience rather than completely replace our experience. So... Uh, for example, you know, I, I think practical, I think class in are perfect examples, like without the teacher really guiding and leading the entire learning process for their students, um, you know, the learning wouldn't really take place so well, uh, even though we, we have so many algorithm and everything behind it. And it, it would it would never be the same, right? It would never really help us achieve or take us to where we wanted to go. 
uh, without that, you know, that little bit of soul that's put into、mm-hmm. it by the teacher. So,、um, and I think a lot of a lot of the confusion, a lot of fear, probably comes from、um, probably comes from a place of unknown, right? Because when we are starting to utilize a lot of edtech tools and switching to this remote learning modality that we're currently in. Um, we really need to have a fundamental change in our pedagogical approaches, not just simply changing the place where we go to our classes, right? So in that sense, it is really actually up to our educators to identify、uh, what are the touch points that are available now, because we're talking about effective dimension of learning, right? Before the effective dimension of learning can take place anywhere on campus, because we constantly have access to our students and we can connect with them very, very instantly. But now, when we are all learning at our homes,、um, that no longer is an option.、Uh, but that doesn't mean we just completely lose touch with our students. It just means that the touch points are a bit different, and now we need to re-identify them and best utilize them so that we can help build a sense of community and really kind of get everybody close together.、Um, so this is a completely different ballgame compared to the traditional face-to-face environment that we're used to. But it doesn't mean. That it is something that's gonna take everything away from us and kind of make everything go, you know, burst into flames or anything.、Um, it is just something that we need to take some time and get used to. Yeah.、Uh, thank you so much to Rose, to Chongming,、mm-hmm. and、uh, Yukun.、Uh, they have given interesting insights、mm-hmm. onto. Uh, as to the nature、mm. of、uh, technology and their relate and its relationship to the effective dimension of teaching and learning.、Mm. Now we're very happy to、uh, introduce now the <laughs> last member of our panel, who's actually、uh, lived practically his entire professional life、uh, for educational technology,、uh, being a computer scientist、uh, himself. So. I'd like you to meet the dean of the School of Teacher Education of National Teachers College, who is also a UNESCO specialist in inclusive, open education, following principles of the Universal Design of Learning. No wonder he is one of the best consultants that the Department of Education and the USAID、uh, have in terms of、uh, rolling out flexible learning opportunities. So please welcome my colleague. Uh, Ferdy Pitagan, Ferds, what's your take on this?、Please. Yeah, thank you very much, Ed.、Uh, I would like to express my deepest gratitude. It's one meeting from the other. This is our new normal right now. But <laughs>、uh, I-, I love what Rose、uh, Yukun and Chongmin has、uh, you know articulated.、Uh, in 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 any technological revolution in education, there is always a question whether that particular technology would replace the teacher inside the classroom. Remember the audiovisual revolution of yesteryears, when it was, you know, film and microfilm and multimedia. Are、ah, they saying, ah, this would replace the teachers inside the classroom because it standardized delivery, it standardized assessment, etc., etc. But we fully believe you and I and in most of this、uh, members of this call that no amount of technology could replace the teacher inside the classroom. Precisely because of the human touch, right? No amount of technology could replicate that compassion. No amount of technology could replicate that love for our students. And as you can as articulated, technology would not replace us. They a PowerPoint presentation is a glorified chalkboard or blackboard, right? <laughs> class in is a、uh, class in is an online version of what we're doing. In in class or face to face, what is more important is that seamless convergence integration of technology with content, with pedagogy and assessment, on top of which the teacher, the human, and the students are interacting. During this pandemic, it accelerated a hundredfold, right? <laughs> Maybe a hundred years more. The The use of educational technology in the Philippines alone, educational technology has been there since the 1980s. We have the ICT for education, we have the strategic plan for, but these were not fully materialized. If we're going to ask teacher, are you integrating technology? Yes, I'm using PowerPoint presentation, I'm using YouTube video, and that's it. 
But because of this pandemic, we see a lot of platforms, a lot of newer, new systems, new innovative approach on how to integrate technology. So it accelerated that particular use, but you are all correct. And, and I, I fully accept that, that teachers, no matter who you are, there's no escaping now the use of technology. Yeah? Institutions around the world as well as organizations are trying to figure out what that new normal is. And believe me, and as well as all the experts here would say, that no matter what configuration is that, that new normal would have an imperative integration of technology. So what we're going to do now is harness the power of technology to affect heightened learning. There are ways on how to do that. There are techniques. Our teachers would need to be skillful in doing that. Technology is not the be all and end all of learning. The presence of technology would not guarantee learning, but that seamless integration that that you know convergence uh, convergence on how to deliver learning through technology but at the end of it all the human interaction fostered by technology now is more important than you know than the lms who has who's a very very deep or with authentic assessment etc cetera, etc cetera. but that fostering of facilitation of that human connection through technology is most important i am thank you very wow. much thank you so much uh, dean Ferds. Uh, i think uh, we were given there a very quick uh, uh, lecture on exactly what we mean by uh, the human dimension of the technology revolution uh, we very much appreciate that and you could very well uh, glean from the way he was explaining things how fun it is to be in his educational technology classes. He's our guru in ed tech uh, classes for our graduate program for teachers and also in research, along with our battalion of uh, teachers in flexible learning. Now, it's interesting. Our chat room has been very noisy while you were you guys were talking. People were affirming what you have said. And over at our FB live chat, I, I could see the comment of Reggie Ray Caparas Fajardo, one of our outstanding graduate school students who mentioned, we teachers are actually technology ourselves. So there's that confluence of identity that people seem to see. So the human side of it and the tech side, uh, it appears that they have really achieved a certain level of confluence. But Dean Ferds, Rose, Yukon, and Chongming said that definitely Technology will not replace a teacher. But I love what Junard Duterte mentioned over the chat room. He said, and I quote, technology will not replace a teacher, but teachers who don't embrace technology would likely be replaced by those teachers who do not have any sense of ethic at all. Junard, you just made me laugh uh, so loud about that and quite true, especially now. Now, speaking of those teachers, you may have heard of or have seen actual teachers and educators really finding ways to mix and match you know, uh, flexible learning modalities recently. Some would mix the production of printed modules with a little LMS somewhere or some would have a little of limited face-to-face, -face, at least in certain countries, not, not in, the, in the Philippines, but very soon, <laughs> uh, with some form of online learning. So there has been a lot of uh, freedom, I would say, creative freedom in these teachers doing exactly that, mixing and matching. But at National Teachers College, we posit that this is the beginning of hybrid and hyper-flexible learning, which we call for short as high-flex learning. Now, from your observations in your international work, in your collaboration with schools and other stakeholders, what do you think are the dispositions and capabilities necessary in becoming a high-flex teacher? And we will be hearing the responses of our speakers in this order. We will begin with Chong Ming, followed by Ferdi, Rose, and then Yukon. Let's get to know who the High Flex teacher is. Chong Ming, what's your take on this? Uh, thank you, Ed. I'll, I'll share a few points. I'm definitely not the High Flex teacher. Uh, okay, so I, I, I've been teaching 
uh, class, some classes online, gamification classes, and also talk to a lot of teachers. So I think the two things that I observe, right, which I feel any have all high flex teachers must have these two traits is fearlessness and curiosity. Okay, so why? Because uh, as, as the military general will say, right, no plan survives contact with the enemy. The moment you step into the classroom with your teaching plan that you plan over the last night, right? The, the moment that you start teaching everything, all the, all the plans go out of the window because you don't know how the students will react. You don't know how fast the students will learn. You don't know what kind of interaction might arise from the students. So as a teacher, you need to have all the tools at, the, at your fingertips in order to deploy the right ones at the right time to make sure that the learning objectives are all clearly met. Okay, so the bottom line that I want to present to everyone is that there is no scary software. There's only unfamiliar software. So if we can all familiarize ourselves with the attack tools and what, what they do and what's their purpose, right? Then at the right time, in the right moment, we can use the tool to actually booster our teaching and learning for the students, okay? So for example, if let's say I need to have face-to-face -face over the internet, what, what tool do I use class in, okay? If I need to have a quick formative assessment to assess whether the students actually understood the, the previous point that I just uh, talked through, uh, we can use Mentimeter, we can use Kahoot. If we, I need to organize information in an MS slide uh, system, right, I can use Nearport, I can use uh, Google Classroom. If I want to facilitate discussions over long distance, right, I can use Flipgrid, get the students to record their videos and then share with everybody. And then there's interaction. If I want to have uh, self-directed learning, let the students do learn their own uh, at their own pace. And then you can use practical, yeah, right. So, uh, so as long as we are fearless and we are not afraid of technology, we we curious about all of them, right? We just need to go and try them out, get familiar with them, and then once we are familiar with them, right? They are all tools that I can use in the classroom to help my students learn better. Okay, so. I think the most important thing and underlying everything, right, is that we need to meet the learning objectives, right? And the tools are there all to help us. We just need to know which ones uh, are appropriate at which time. Okay, so that's my, my two cents. Uh, over to you, Sir Ferdi. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Chong Min. Um, when, when we talk of high-flex learning, this is a combination of technology-mediated and that of in-class or face-to-face -face classroom in which students were given the chance or the decision on what to choose from the two and decide on themselves what to learn, when to learn, how to learn, et cetera, et cetera. So in order for us to transition to, to that high flex learning, a high flex teacher now, number one should have that paradigm shift. Paradigm shift in essence that we provide the resources, we provide the skill building, we can provide assessment, but at the end of the day, it is the student who would decide learning. Say, for example, if you're going to put all your references, skill building, all your materials in a learning management system, you could have your sync session with your students, but the independent individualized learning of your students would be decided upon by that student. So this is a heightened learner-centeredness because they, they themselves decide what to learn, when to learn, how to learn. So that control over learning is now shared between the student and the teacher, right? Not like before when it is uh, teacher-centered, if, if you miss a lecture of the teacher, then almost 50% of your learning would be gone. Or the teacher would decide, ah, for this time, we're going to learn this, for this time, we're going to learn this, for this time. But when we talk of high-flex learning, materials, think of a MOOC or think of an online learning. Materials, skills building are, are already there. And and you've given that in, uh, to your students. So that paradigm shift of control is no longer within the teacher's you know, realm. And number two, we have to, we, we have to also embrace that paradigm shift that our students are also curator, creator of knowledge. They could also be leaders and co-facilitators and co-moderators of that learning high-plex systems. The, the available information to me as a teacher is also available to my students. And because they are more tech savvy than I am, because remember, these are digital natives, they could peruse more contents than I do. So thereby, I am no longer the sole provider of content. I could be the instructional designer. I designed the you know, learning platform and everything. But in terms of content, 
in terms of content, the students may know more <laughs> than we do teachers, right? Because they, they have the available resources, especially those who are tech savvy. Which brings to my second point. A high flex teacher should be tech savvy. You should not be afraid to embrace technology. You should not be afraid to embrace technology into the classroom, which brings to the first point of our panel of experts. Technology is there to help us. Technology is there to, you know, to make our life easier, but they are not the be all and end all of learning. They are glorified blackboards, they are glorified presentation, they are glorified, you know, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, teachers should embrace technology. Someone said, if you're not going to uh, embrace technology, you would be replaced by teachers who do. <laughs> okay. And teachers nowadays, uh, number three, would have to have that progressive mindset. I, I can commit mistake. Diba? I, I, I can, you know, in, in my instructional design or even in my, I can. Or I, I have to, I have to, to be well also. I have to love myself also as well as I love me. I have to take care of myself. So, so that progressive stance on, on, on taking oneself, on taking your students as well as, as uh, in terms of mistake and challenges and clarification. As I have mentioned, there is none yet across the world of a foolproof um, uh, decision or a foolproof uh, framework. Hey, you, you, we have all to do this because this has been proven time and again, or this is the best way to, to push forward. And of course, lastly, this is what we are very, very proud in NTC, is we provide enhanced learning experiences through high flex learning. We, we don't, are not saying we are doing away with content or with assessment, but what we're trying to do is to create that enhanced experience through technology. May it 